Maybe you want to drink too. Okay, good. Oh, hi everyone. My name is Irene and welcome to my channel, Leafing Around, where we talk all about tropical plants and garden. And yes, you have spotted that I've made a new purchase. This is my uh, Monstera Aurea. And I hope it's going to survive and not die on me like the elbow. But anyway, this video, I'm going to share with you how to make an artisanal pole. So, like a moss pole, but instead of a regular moss pole, it's just something that is more artistic. It all started because I have this plant and then I thought, it deserves much more than a regular moss pole. A regular moss pole is very useful and this one is very well made, it's very functional. But then I just couldn't bear to put it on this. I thought, um, I was gonna say ugly, but I don't wanna offend a very good functional pole. It's just not quite a match for it. So then I got carried away and started to design my own moss pole and this is literally stuck with a lot of moss all around this pole along with um, natural ferns and things that I kind of picked up from beside the, the drain behind my house. Yeah. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, first of all, you need a branch. And here I have a branch that has been thoroughly burnt because I picked it up from uh, the roadside again. Uh, this was picked up from the piece of land where I think the landowner has chopped off all the trees and then proceeded to burn the remaining branches. And um, so yeah, this is how I got this. Now, perhaps you do not have burnt branches nearby where you live, you could equally use also regular branches. Just remember that when you do bring them in to, to clean them out thoroughly and then um, process them before you use them. By processing them, I think what could be good is that if you give them a really good wash, scrub, and then proceed to um, oil them even. For this, I feel uh, the charcoal, because it's already charcoal, I didn't have to process it much further. And besides, we know that charcoal has been a really good addition uh, for your soil. So I like to think that as I insert this into my pot, this is also a beneficial thing for my plant. And if you look closer, the texture here is amazing. It's got like snake-like, uh, alligator-like skin texture to it. Now, okay. Now that we have a branch, and oh, and if you want to achieve this effect for your branch, you could take your regular branch and just burn it. Yeah, just burn it, char it. And I'm gonna get my husband to do it here, that as you could see. Um, so if you have a gas of tank and then this device, you could proceed to char your own branch. So shoshugiban is a Japanese method of burning the wood for a few purposes. One is uh, helps to preserve, make it waterproof. Secondly, it's to deter pests because pests uh, apparently don't, are not attracted to this after it's been burned and charred. And then lastly, it gives it a very nice texture. When it's burnt, it brings out some of the texture and lines that you would otherwise not see if it wasn't burnt. So this is the raw unburnt version. This is what it looks like after it's been burnt. Totally black. But this one that I picked up from the roadside, somehow it's able to have that texture. I'm not sure how that's achieved, but yeah, the one that's free from the roadside, I think it's the best. So what I have here is this branch and then a whole lot of moss, sphagnum moss as well as live ones, and then uh, random ferns. So let's get started to put some sphagnum. And then I kind of just, yeah, clump them up. And then when you feel like you have enough, you can start to tie 
tie them. So what I have here is kind of like a fishing net. It's transparent. So let's give it a cut. And I would tie a knot here. And then it's a bit of no brainer really. You just kind of go round and round and wrap it until your string ends. Just remember to pull it quite tight. And when you have reached the end to tie the knot. Ta-da! So we've got the top part down, then we tackle the other side and then really just do the same thing. Have more. Kind of go over the entire branch for this section. So if you can imagine if the roots are, are hanging onto it, it could crawl all over. So if you have two person, uh, this would be much easier. Try get a family member to help you. So same thing, tie a knot, tight, secure it. So you see, I was struggling a little with getting the thread under. So I've decided to innovate my process with the use of some bricks. Ow, ah, I think I just hurt my back. Um, so if we could, oh my leaves rest it on a couple of bricks then I have a gap in between ta-da stick them here whoops it, it's gonna be a messy process so um, get a friend to help you if you can So now this part here is completely wrapped with sphagnum and next we are going to stick some live moss on it and you can see it's starting to come together and I'm also gonna put some um, ferns see this fern that I have so I bought a pot of fern and I think I would take a bit of it out and in fact some of it just fell out whoa hang on ah so this bit just fell out, which is perfect. I'm gonna put the rest on the floor. Um, ew, it's got something disgusting stuck at the bottom. Let me just give it a good wash. Hang on. I'm bad washing it, but I just realized the bit that fell out doesn't have a lot of roots. So let me try to um, grab another piece of it. Probably should have a place to unpot this. I'll just do it on the floor. Um. I've just brutally uh, removed a chunk of it with good amount of roots. So I hope that's not too horrific an experience for the fern. Um, Mm, this leaf looks like it's got infection. I'll throw it away. And now I'm gonna stick the moss on the outside so it secures it. Just one more piece here. Let's start to tie some strings around. So once again, uh, pretty much the same process. Just tie it as tight as you can I'm thinking instead of just uh, adding more moss here I'm gonna add this and to give it a bit of a different texture and interest um, so let's Fasten it with some strings. Tie it. Pretty much the same process actually. Anything you want there, just stick it on and then hang it, hang on tight with strings and 
just pull the string really tight whoops and hope it doesn't fall off and because I've left a lot, a lot of these are uncut let's say so it's very helpful I can then tie it to any of these hanging surplus strings from the previous ties so I will just proceed then to pollen a little bit of moss all over so this is what we have at the moment and I'm thinking I really like to add these ferns they they look really good and I have some in the backyard so so let's go and look for them actually we didn't have to go to the backyard because we found this sad looking uh, fern this is how this was is a variegated Boston fern but then there's this lovely I don't know what this is but this grows profusely in, in the wild everywhere so I'm gonna take this fern and put it on my pole now so uh, this is the net pot It's growing out of the net pot I'm just gonna try and pull it out Ta-da! okay so this looks easy like it could almost just hug this pole so um, I'm not sure can we just do, do that maybe this is a really really weird shape I don't know do I want it to go yeah down okay all right something like that and now we will proceed to um, string it ah all right okay good so that's how it is and then we're gonna put stick some moss on it this is a nice huge piece and now we just have to go through it with the strings so this is what it looks like it's kind of like a surprise every time I'm really not sure how it turned out so just random ferns and moss and now we proceed to do the top part so very much like what we've done here palette with sphagnum string it up oh but because we have a V shape here so um, we could ma make more sphagnum moss sit on top of it I'm going to attempt to put this fern that you see um, there that it kind of drapes down and hang down Ooh. I'm going to give it a little bit of um, peat too maybe that'll help and as you can see everything is falling apart <coughs> Oh, and then this one. I do have more of these ferns, so let me attach more of them up there. Hang on. Yes, a little bit brutal. Okay, I got this bit out. I, just, I don't know how to position this. They're everywhere. Okay, maybe like that. Maybe I'm going to cut this bit off because I don't know what to do with it. And if everything would stay still while I string it up, I'm not sure how to do that. Let's just plunk in more spec to hold it, hold it, and don't drop. Okay, this is in the ideal world how they would sit. And now I have to get my string. You know what, I just had this crazy idea. I have a begonia here that I have been propagating. I think this is the begonia snow cat and I have been propagating it in uh, moss, sphagnum moss. Ta-da! And then, guess what? That's a moss and this is a moss and if it can thrive in sphagnum moss, I might as well just try uh, stick it on my moss pole. 
So yeah, let's let's see. Let's add a begonia on the moss pole too. Why not? You get the gist. We're just gonna go round and round with the string. So normally the begonia, I do not use sphagnum to plant them, but I think it has adapted to sphagnum. So just gonna try transit. I think it, it should survive here. So this is what we have here so far. Yeah, you never know what you're gonna get. Just up to your creativity and what's on hand. Okay, I'm slightly appalled that this is kind of the front facing but then this bit here isn't you have to turn it around but I might tell myself it's okay if it doesn't have an exact front so you could appreciate it from this angle as well as that angle at the back now being a moss pole I'm now gonna put it in a pot and then as the branch is pretty heavy um, I would like something heavy also to fill up the pot at the bottom. What? <laughs> Doesn't break. <laughs> that was a stubborn break. We try a new break. Oh, yay! So yay, I've got now bricks. Oh wait, this isn't quite in the middle yet. Middle, put it here. Just so that it could stand, you know. Right, now that it is sort of standing. Um, cool, right. <laughs> I'll fill it with pumice. So, I'm thinking some a uh, philodendron would be good because they love to climb now i have to think of what what plant i put in here to climb um i have some raffirodora megasperma i think that has been kind of abandoned and uncared for look at that it's so sad it's thriving despite neglect the roots are so healthy with no media almost i think so and then let's kind of pour it out so um this is the raffiradora mega sperma perhaps and it should have holes like this and because i didn't give it a good climbing pole the leaves became subsequently smaller and smaller and then lost its fenestration okay so this plant if you don't give it a pole it's sets off a runner can you see the runner how it has really tiny leaves so a very much overdue um pole that it needs it's not very pretty now but it's, it will be when it climbs up okay so that is kind of this project done i know it doesn't look like much now because uh, this is still quite a juvenile plant but as it grows up, I hope to keep you updated as the leaves get bigger and bigger and get fenestrated. This is one that I did a couple of days ago. So similarly, I have um, put in two chunks of moss and actually you could add more in the middle too because then you know it helps whatever plant that's climbing to go on top. In fact, I might just do that right now. So we've added some bit in the middle and then for this I um, I discovered this grass looking thing apparently this is called fiber optic grass fiber optic grass and I thought it would look quite nice at the bottom of the pot I'm just gonna let it stay in this very dense media because I read that um, this plant loves water in fact it lives by river and marshland and so no worries about being wet except maybe i can't fit in here 
So I've created big enough a space now so it could fit in and I hope it looks nice from where you are. I can't quite see it. And then I'm going to put a philodendron because a moss pole is made because we have a philodendron to climb. And this one I've just made a cutting uh, yesterday actually. This is my philodendron. Glorious. Glorious is a hybrid of Gloriousum and Melanocrossum, I think, if I got that right. And so let's make it climb somewhere. Okay, I've just decided that maybe the Glorious uh, does not fit here very well. And also, I'm not very sure if it wants to creep or crawl. So I'm gonna change my mind and replace that with a different, different fillow. Yeah. I'll just, just plunk it here on the ground, maybe. Ah, okay. So instead, I have, reloc I'm relocating this Veru. It had been growing on a tree, but it hasn't been growing very much because I think the spot I've got over there is just too dark and Veru actually loves a bit more sun and I can place this pole in a spot that has more sun oh yeah another thing I forgot to mention it is a good idea to put together plants which have the same needs now I read out about this fiber optic grass and it loves a lot of light so and ferns believe it or not they also love light and this needs more light and um, I have very, very well-draining media here, so it wouldn't mind to be rained upon every day. There, this looks like a good spot for it. So, super well-draining mix. Pumice, charcoal, cocoa husk. And then I would stick this fella closer to this piece of wood. So there are some roots here where I'm gonna put some spack here so um, it will attach itself, itself to that area now. So with this kind of artisanal pole thing, you gotta really catch where the roots are and then make sure you have a nice moist sphagnum moss in that area. So we stuck some um, sphagnum moss here. I'm just going to decorate it with a little bit of live moss. Not too tight. You want some room for it to grow. So ta-da! This is what I think a complete piece. And so our artisanal moss pole, which is kind of looking like a living floral arrangement now. So at the bottom here with the fiber optic, grass and I'll put here the proper name below and then kind of like in the midsection the very cross them which we then expect them to climb up this pole so I hope to show you in a few months time that it would get larger and larger leaves and then this is dressed by sphagnum moss live moss ferns all over I hope you like this piece okay now we come back to this very small pole that we have made earlier. So I've given the Raffirodora um, a good wash because I've discovered some millibucks on it just now. So we've actually taken it out and put it back in again. So remember, before you put plants in together, it is always a good idea to check for pest. And now I am thinking maybe to add this pothos. I'm not sure if it's cream splash or something. Uh, I think I would like it to climb up the pole. So, I had this hanging before, but um, I feel like it could grow even bigger if it's got something to grip on. So, a pole would do nicely. So, let's block it here, and then this could nicely stick up there. There, I have a very good feeling they would hug the moss real tight soon. Okay, so I think I can consider this complete now. The base is filled out with climbing plants and if you can use your imagination, hopefully in three to six months time, they will all grow bigger and crawl up. And so I just want to show you again, here is some pothos, here is my Raffirodora. And then I'm going to track their progress too. Whenever they send out roots, I'm going to have to make sure uh, there's kind of the moist sphagnum moss to catch them. So it's a little bit of a work that way, but 
I think, you know, it's worth it. And then we have created a very natural looking thing with um, ferns and moss and then even stuck this begonia on top. So this is it. We have completed our artisanal moss pole and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and picked up a thing or two and maybe you could try it out on your own, right? Sometimes maybe we want more than just a regular moss pole. So please consider subscribing to my channel and also share this video with others whom you think might enjoy it too. And to then, I bid you farewell, goodbye, alam.